Hi, welcome back to a brand new video with Minus You243. And something is wrong with my life at the moment. Uh, I don't know. It looks like that in my recording. Something is wrong. Uh, half of my face is completely dark almost. I don't know. It could be the sun. Uh, it could be the light from outside that's doing it. Or maybe because I'm covering with a blanket over my door so you know to they didn't uh, come in earlier so something is or maybe it's because the sun has moved more like uh, you know I don't, I don't know hope it doesn't bother you too much anyway be sure to go down in the description below good low watch the with you first then come back here and let's watch it together as uh, today we're gonna watch a new Jeff episode as it's Dio, Dio from uh, from Alucard, I was about to say, that was not right. Uh, Dio from uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure versus Alucard from Helsing. Now, Alucard as a character, I know, he is a vampire. Uh, that's uh, fair enough. Uh, I assume this variation of Alucard is exactly the same. Okay, anyway, um, that's the one, uh, you know, it's very similar, I assume, but to Castlevania. But uh, I I assume that it is, you know, just because of the name. Uh, I don't know Deo, so I can't really say anything about that guy. So, I guess I just have to put this one short and let's go into the analysis and let's watch it together. So... Let's play. This episode of Death Battle is sponsored by BetterHelp. Is there something interfering with your happiness and keeping you from achieving? Let's see what these two characters are capable of. needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start before I can make an informed decision about who I think is going to win this battle. Weekly video or phone calls. So say goodbye to stuffy waiting rooms. It's all from the comfort of your own home. It is kind of bothering me a little bit, I see it, the fact that my partner's face is dark. It's so as dark as it is, you know, because of the lighting. The lighting is bothering me, that's what I'm referring to. I don't know, I hope it doesn't bother you too much, and I have to just deal with it, so... <laughs> or I can record it too. On another day, of course, but... How do I get this one? Out of the way, so I recorded and caught up to every episode because I just recorded the previous two, so and I s there's a video I want to watch or a live stream I want to watch, but I got time to record this one, so why not do that? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death. Okay, this is going to be a 2D one. Alright. Imagine, if you can, someone so wicked that the sheer magnitude Let's of see. their unholy dickishness literally destroyed the universe. You might think they'd have to be no less than the devil himself, but it was him, Dio. Born a penniless street rat with a cunning mind in the slums of Victorian London, Dio was humiliated I said if my name uh, correctly, didn't that Dio? Earlier? I said Dio earlier, didn't that? I think so. And probably, probably in the previous episode, too. To reach a place over heaven. And he'd get his chance to act when he was adopted into the wealthy Joe Star family. Dio planned to kill his new father, George Joe Star, and take his fortune for himself. Only one thing stood in his way his new brother, Jonathan Joe Star, aka Jojo. Dio Jojo himself, huh? Fun Jojo by engaging in such classic sibling pranks as beating him up, molesting his girlfriend, and setting his dog on fire. Jesus, you give that okay, this seems like the same thing to do my webcam. But after years of emotional manipulation, Dio's twisted assassination plot it's was just a bit weird. by his righteous stepbrother. With help from the interfering speed wagon, all seemed lost until Dio pulled out his plan B, an ancient stone mask that turned him into a vampire. That's just bizarre. 
Okay, so he's not technically a vampire like, say, Dracula. Instead of turning you into an unholy demon, the stone mask eliminates your body's natural limitations. Making him way stronger, faster, and tougher than any human. He can hear a heartbeat through the ground, fly through the air, and hypnotize you with just a glance. It gets weirder. Dio can create mind-controlling flesh buds from his hair follicles, vaporize the moisture in his body to freeze anything he touches, and fire beams of pressurized fluids that can split the sky. Pressurized fluids? <laughs> oh, sometimes it's too easy, Wiz. Even more insane is Dio's healing factor. He's been burnt alive, impaled through the head, bisected, decapitated, lost limbs, filled with bullets, and had a huge hole punched in his chest not once, not twice, but three times. Three times. Another similar vampire, straight, survived being blown to pieces. Damn, this guy can hold himself back together. All Dio needs is some blood to speed up the process, so he is basically a vampire. Though I guess the fangs are just for decoration because he sucks blood through his fingers. That is weird. Dio uses you this uh, the sharp teeth to and bite the into them, and that is awful. Feed a baby to its own mother, just for kicks. We've had a lot of real pieces of shit on this show, Wiz, but I'm starting to think Dio takes the cake. Luckily, his plans were foiled again by his old frenemy Jojo, who beat Dio's ass with a martial art that uses the power of the sun, Hamon. Because, should Dio's vampire body be subjected to sunlight, he will instantly disintegrate. So, what did Dio do? Well, he cut off his own head, killed Jonathan on his wedding night, and attached his head to Jojo's body. Wow. <laughs> Take taken for sure. Yeah. Brief century in a coffin at the bottom of the ocean, Dio resurfaced in Egypt and tried once again to take over the world. His ultimate goal was to create a world where everyone knew their own fate and could make peace with the inevitable tragedies life had in store. In Dio's mind, heaven. And he'd make it happen no matter how many breads he'd have to eat. After being struck by a mystical arrow, sure, why not, Dio gained a stand. The embodiment of a user's life force. Since they're made of psychic energy, stands can only be seen by stand users and can only be hurt by other stands. Quite the obstacle for any opponent lacking similar abilities. Ow. Oh, that one's sharp. Hey, look, Wiz, I got a stand. I call it 99 Bottles. Hold on. Oh, shit. Uh, don't worry, Wiz. I'll change you back with your D trans mode. D trans Trans Ooh, look, a giant beer. Isn't it a little bit too big for your boob sick? Uh, as befits a god among men, Dio received one of the most powerful stands in history. The Lord With its ability to stop time. Time, huh? Thanks for the... Ow! Well, not only does his time stop get longer with each use, he can spam it as much as he likes. He's a massive troll. The world is absurdly strong and fast, able to match the stand Star Platinum, which belongs to Jonathan's great-great-grandson, Jotaro Kujo. He technically inherited it from Dio through Jonathan's body and bloodline, making Star Platinum and the world the same stand. And both are two of the strongest stands out there, just as strong as Stone Free, which can punch meteors that were pulled to Earth in seconds. By measuring the distance the meteors are from Earth, we can estimate they were moving at over 11 million meters per second. Factoring in their mass, they'd each have a kinetic energy of 441 kilotons of TNT. Okay, 11 punches that are faster than light and uh, 400 kept up with this in TNT. Chariot, which could cut a beam of light. Looking at the interval Silver Chariot's sword swung relative to the light beam, it must have moved over 1,500 times the speed of light. 1,500 times? ...has matched Star Platinum on his own and taken its punches head on. Yeah, yeah, but that's nothing compared to Dio's secret weapon, the greatest weapon in anime history. The Steamroller. Turns out Dio's a hell of a chef. He can make pancakes and donuts. Even so, despite having a massive god complex, Dio's still a careful tactician capable of exploiting an opponent's weaknesses. Too bad he wasn't prepared for Jotaro to learn how to stop time too and murder the shit out of him. That's some hardcore karma right there. But it only makes sense that a dog murderer would die like a bitch. But much like the machinations of great and terrible men, Dio's will was immortal. 
In time, his greatest followers succeeded in extinguishing the Joestar bloodline and literally remaking the universe in Dio's image, creating that heaven he always dreamed of. I guess when you're named after a rock star, a movie star, and, uh, oh, that's right, God, you're pretty much bound for greatness. Yeah, I guess so. Your first kiss would be Jojo, but it was I, Dio. Well. How blessed are some people whose lives have no fears, no dreads. For though the world Let's go all the then. good men, there are monsters in it. But don't worry, jolly old England has it covered with the Helsing Organization. Founded by famous vampire hunter Abraham Van Helsing and led by his descendant Integra, this secret government institution has saved the world time and again with their secret weapon. And what better weapon to hunt vampires than with one of their very own, the No Life King, the Bird of Hermes, Alucard. To most, his origin was shrouded in mystery. But under Helsing's employ, he was molded into an elite hunter, made even more vicious by his intense hatred of his fellow vampire kind. A hatred that he expresses with two of the gnarliest handguns you'll ever pray to your infinite god to never see in person. Alucard's primary sidearm is the Castle, a behemoth of a handgun able to kill most undead in one shot with holy bullets that can nullify a vampire's healing factor. The Jekyll is the handgun she told you not to worry about. 16 inches long and weighing 35 pounds, its armor-piercing, hollow-point bullets, jacketed in blessed Macedonian silver, were built to annihilate the toughest monsters. And after decades of clandestine experimentation, Helsing enhanced Alucard's vampiric abilities far beyond the norm. Alucard can walk through walls, cast illusions, levitate, and move objects with his mind. Objects like, say, an ocean of over three million people's blood. Damn! That'd be an energy worth half a ton of TNT. I his can have an awesome joke in comparison to the guy. Now that we're more on the or something. Glance and see through hallucinations with his third eye. He's not a triclops. It's more of a sixth sense that lets him hit bullseyes from a kilometer away and even predict your movements. Kind of like the Sharon gun. Of course, he wouldn't be a real vampire if he couldn't drink blood. The catch is, when he drinks enough blood to kill you, he literally absorbs your soul. Damn. And that right there is the source uh. of his most fearsome ability. You just can't kill no, I can't sneeze. Shoot him into <laughs> I feel like there's a sneeze on the way. Oh, that's why, but turn him into a literal he's just won't call me. He'll just regenerate his body, lick it split. Like, we've seen some overpowered healing factors on this show before, but Alucard's is just bullshit. While he does possess blood and organs like a regular human, Alucard's body is, in reality, composed of an ethereal, shadow-like substance that he can morph any way he wants. This allows him to shapeshift and instantly heal any wound, and each soul Alucard has consumed acts as an extra life that he can spend whenever he's fatally injured. Kind of like a video game. And after 500 years of unlife, Alucard has consumed literally millions of souls. Hmm. Uh, yay, more beer! Just like me. What up? Helsing needed a beast as fearsome as Alucard to take on Millennium, aka Nazi vampires. That's like evil squared. Like when Millennium SS Lieutenant Rip Van Winkle commandeered a British aircraft carrier as part of an invasion of London. Alucard didn't like that very much, so he jackknifed it with an SR-71 Blackbird at Mach 3. A fully loaded Blackbird weighs 170,000 pounds, meaning it's struck with the kinetic energy of 11 tons of TNT. 11 That's tons? as powerful as the U.S. Massive Ordnance Air Blast. A.K.A. the mother of all bombs! And Al was in the middle of that and strolled out like it was nothing. Just as impressive as intercepting Rip's magic bullets. Comparing the distance one bullet moved to the jet in the same time frame as the jet's own movement, each bullet would have to be moving at 1,500 times the speed of sound. And Alucard caught one with his freaking teeth. And after giving Rip's name a new meaning, he drove that aircraft carrier back to shore with his mind to fight two separate armies at the same time. What a goddamn monster! It goes without saying that Alucard's immense power and bloodlust needed to be controlled. So six restriction levels were placed on him that he can release against dangerous opponents. Level six through two are for wrecking your ordinary ghouls. Level one is for your heavy duty vampires and for getting this gnarly demon doggo made from his shadow essence, Baskerville. But there exists an even greater state of power Alucard can release when he wants to end the world. 
Level zero. Level Once zero. Activated, level zero releases every single soul Alucard has consumed as a sea of blood soaked zombies. All three million of them. Whoa. Sure, with his souls gone, he can't heal as easily, and if his heart is destroyed, he'll die permanently. But the sheer numbers and power of this army from hell makes him virtually impossible to approach in the first place. He's unstoppable. This guy's got to be like the king of all vampires. Indeed, he is. Helsing purposely kept Alucard's true identity a secret, all in the code name. Alucard backwards. Dracula. Dracula? Yeah, duh, Wiz, idiot. Over 500 years ago, the Wallachian Vavode Vlad Dracula battled the Ottoman Turks for control over Eastern Europe and impaled thousands of people in the process. Hence his historical name, Vlad the Impaler. But things didn't end up too good for him. Right before his execution, he took a big old sip of some blood from the battlefield, sacrificing his humanity in order to become an immortal creature of the night. And that is when the legend was born. But it wasn't anything Dracula was proud of. He grew to despise his monstrous nature and saw it as cowardice. The main reason he hated other vampires so much was that he really hated himself. No, oh, that's deep, Wiz. Yeah, it is deep. He always lets his enemies rip into him like a pinata of self-loathing. His crazy OP healing factor will fix everything anyways. Millennium would exploit this arrogance by tricking Alucard into absorbing the soul and abilities of Schrodinger, a German cat boy who controls his own quantum state. This grants him pseudo-omnipresence and immortality. He can exist everywhere and nowhere, and cannot die so long as he can recognize his own existence. But because Al had three million souls kicking around inside him, Trudy couldn't recognize himself anymore, forcing him, and thus Alucard, to fade out of existence. So Alucard spent 30 years killing the other three million souls inside of him until he could return to reality and his master. He undid his own unexistence. Whoa. No matter how spoopy the threat. That should not be possible. He's just waiting for the day he meets but it is for him. Strong enough to end his unlife for good. But should he face a fellow monster, a fool who rejected their humanity like himself, he'll let loose the dogs of war and all hell will sing. I'm a dog. Then yeah, okay, that's definitely the sunlight that's causing it to be so dark for me. It's probably because the sun is right there. All right, the combatants are set. And I'll run the data through all there. possibilities. But first, if you want the same kind of confidence that lets you try to take Let's get that, by the way. The zombie army. First off, interesting. Secondly, try out Blue Chew. <laughs> all right. So after watching this analysis, I um uh, Okay, for a while there I was leaning towards uh Dio Dio But um Yeah he definitely capable of a lot of stuff but it seems like Alucard here this version of Alucard at least is um you know if he could reverse his own death in uh, combat, and just by killing all the souls or something, like he already uh, managed to get, get all over his years. Uh, I think he definitely has it, though he doesn't seem to have survived as much TNT Wait. as, uh, as uh, Dio has. But, because um, I think they said over 400 or something with him. And then was 11 on Alucard, which is a huge difference. So, uh, there's that. But he definitely seems to be a lot faster, if I remember the speed correctly. So, um, that's on that. Uh, you know, I feel like, you know, Alucard definitely has a lot of disadvantages here. Definitely when it comes to what he's capable of surviving, I guess. But because of his uh, zombie-fied army, I think he definitely has a lot of opportunity to win. And uh, yeah, sure, he has his uh, two guns too, and he has, uh, uh, you know, he probably can do pretty much much more than what they said here, of course. But uh, maybe he also can do a lot of stuff there, similar, a lot of stuff that the other Alucard, you know. Uh, can do the wolf from Castlevania, and um, I don't know. Could be interesting to see those two together. By the way, Alucard versus Alucard. 
Helsing versus Castlevania. Will that be interesting? Could be. So anyway, uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with uh, Alan Carr for this one. I feel like uh, there's a big part of me that tells me that the US will to win this one just because it's a couple of surviving so much. Uh, and all that stuff, but when it comes to Alcott, if he's uh, capable of reversing his own death, which purpose makes him immortal, I don't think he is going to lose this one. So the winner is going to be Alcott, and let's go to the depot and see if I'm right. So, let's play. But right now it's time for a death battle! Let's see if I'm right though. Alucard is gonna win. All right. So, Alcar, prove me right, please, prove me right. Oh, don't be so sure. I think you're gonna get eaten there. Yeah, okay, the... Steamroller, what's that what you call it? I almost said bulldozer, but that's not right. <laughs> that is a lot of blood, though. Can he outmatch all of those zombies while getting bitten? Doesn't seem like it. A real fucking vampire. Oh, okay. Come on, Alucard. Destroy this guy. Why would you bite down on the gun? Isn't that a terrible idea? Sure, you survived, but it's a terrible idea to bite on the gun that's about to shoot you. Time's up. Again, look like. All right, that was wrong. Oh, pulled out all the stumps, but like the bloody drink, it was in vain. 
<laughs> yes, I'm not surprised. He may have been the king of the vampires in Helsing, but Dio had everything he needed to clip Okay, now the sun is even more peeking out of the window, so I'm going to get blinded. <laughs> until they get tired, then take advantage of an opening. But he couldn't do that here because Dio didn't really have any openings. And Alucard wasn't nearly as strong or as fast to compensate. Alucard could survive crashing that jet and move 1500 times faster than sound. But scaling from Stone Free and Silver Chariot, the world could punch relativistic meteors and move 1500 times faster than light. That would make Dio nearly 40,000 times stronger and 800,000 times faster than Alucard. Hell, Alucard couldn't even see or hurt the world in the first place because he's not a stand user. And since stone mask vampires from JoJo aren't weak to holy weapons like Helsing vampires are, Al's guns were more or less dead weight. Plus, Alucard just had no way to get past the time stop. Even if he did somehow, Dio could just freeze him on contact. And considering Dio has taken punches from Star Platinum, Al would have had trouble doing damage even if he got the chance. Dio's far greater speed and power meant that, given enough time, he could realistically kill Alucard three million times in quick succession. Without any viable options for attack or openings to exploit, Alucard's soul-based regeneration meant he would run out of lives eventually, and level zero only sped up that process. Sure, that army's nothing to scoff at, but consider the time Dio's eye beams split those huge-ass clouds. Estimating the size of the clouds and the speed at which they moved, Dio's beams must have output an energy of over 10 megatons of TNT, enough to wipe out Alucard's army in one go, leaving him vulnerable. Just like when this other vampire, Walter, could have killed him by piercing his heart. Alucard's even admitted it himself. Hell, Alucard's army is filled with blood. You know, that thing that Dio uses to heal? But Wiz, what about Schrodinger? With his powers, Al can't die unless he chooses to. While Schrodinger's quantum immortality makes him impossible to kill normally, it is literally part of the story that Alucard cannot have Schrodinger's abilities and his greater array of powers at the same time, or else he'll no longer exist. We can't give him both Schrodinger and his standard powers without breaking the lore and rules of the character. Even if we did, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't help him kill Dio at all, so at best it'd be a stalemate. Until Dio hypnotizes Alucard, asks him about his powers, and forces him to eject Schrody like the rest of his souls. Shocking though it may be, Dio's overwhelming offense, impenetrable defense, and uniquely devastating abilities wore Alucard down until the no-life king had no lives left. Alucard got Dio'd! Uh, Boomstick, you tell the worst puns in the world. That's right, and you're just gonna have to deal with it. And hey, wait a minute, that was a pun. That's my territory. We talked about this. The winner. Is All right, Dio. congratulations, Dio. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. We really who's next, though? I don't know who's next. For something else to watch right now, just click the box on the screen. So let's find out. Red versus blue family shatters, where the red versus blue zero crew gets up to all sorts of wacky antics. It's really fun. A lot of people who worked on Death Battle also worked on this show, so give it a watch. Thanks. Who is next? Oh, is it? Okay, this Akuma versus. Okay. I think you should start with this Death Ball. I totally thought this was okay. Uh, yeah, sure, I was leaning towards uh, the with some cases there, but they also said something about Alucard being able to, you know, just kill all the souls he'd killed and then come back, so that's probably one of the reasons why I would want to go with him, but... But I'm still not surprised about the, me being wrong here. So, yeah, um... Not surprised at all, really, uh, that Dio won this one, so congratulations to him. Uh, the battle was fine, I actually enjoyed this one. This might have been this Halloween special episode, if you want to count it as that. So, you know, because it's Dracula, or Alucard in this case. So, yeah, I enjoyed this one. It, uh, fun to watch, uh, the battle music did fine for me. Voice acting was fine, the animation was fine. I don't know if it's the best. I don't think I'm gonna say it's the best to the battle. Uh, but it's. 
but it was enjoyable to watch nonetheless. Now, when it comes to the next time, we had uh, yeah, we had Akuma versus uh, Sean Khan. Now, Sean Khan has been in that level before, and so has Akuma. Akuma might have been there twice, actually. I feel like he might have been there twice. It was against the uh, oh, it was a song or whatever it's called. And then I think it was in level two. I'm not sure. I might be wrong about this one. But uh, Sean Kong was against M. Bison last time. But a lot has changed since then. And Sean Kong has been through... Well, he's done a few new thing things since then. He made a reappearance in Mortal Kombat 11, so... There's that, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, <laughs> But, you know, Akuma is probably a pretty good character. Yeah, quite as powerful as is or two, you know, when it comes to Street Fighter and all. But now he, he's going up against Mortal Kombat uh, Sean Kong, which. And that guy is no joke either. Uh, so. Uh, if I had to make a guess right here now, Sean Kong is definitely. Most definitely the most likely one to win there. But, um. I don't know. Um, I guess I don't know. Remember per, uh, a whole lot about Okuma, uh, you know. And I know, <laughs> you know. So I can't really uh, say I'm known to the. I don't know any of these two characters really to the extent that on Quarry used to. But uh, I feel like I'm more sure come better, but. As I don't really play a whole lot of Street Fighter, I don't play a whole lot of more combat either, but I have touched, uh... Okay, I might have touched about, about the same among more combat games as I touched uh, Street Fighter, so... There's that. Anyway, uh... So, I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, video, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And as I hopefully mentioned in the beginning of the video, link to this video is down below, and it should have popped up somewhere in the corner here. It should be available in the corner in general, so... So there's that, and... Now it's just for me to wait for the next episode. Uh, let's see. I recorded the three last episodes now. Back to back. I haven't edited any of those three now. Uh, yet. So, for me, it's gonna be a while before I get to react to this one. It's gonna be it's November 7th, and it's uh, October 26th, the day I recorded this uh, this one and the two previous episodes. Uh, meaning that November 7th is. Yeah, okay, yeah, November 7th, and it's on the month, following Monday, though, so it's a couple of weeks away from me. So you get this one, the next one. Oh, the episode is supposedly releasing before this episode reaction comes out. So um, yeah, I have pretty much caught up. I have watched every episode that's available right now. I'm just to wait for the next one. So there's that. So anyway, thank you guys so very much for watching, and I hope you guys did enjoy this uh, video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Minish YouTuber signing out. And again, I'm sorry about the light problems this time, but the sun has moved from, uh, you know, over. Oh wow! Um, the sun has moved from uh, to my door to my window. So, and because I'm covering the door with a blanket. You know, because I have to be able to see my screen. I wasn't able to see it before that, so... Anyway, see you guys in the next video. Minish 240 signing out.